Okay, so I wanted to make a quick video about the homework, in particular the first few problems from chapter seven. So I'm just looking at an example here. Um, it says, let X represent the full height of a certain species of tree. Assume that X has a normal probability distribution with a mean of 155.4 feet and a standard deviation of 29.3 feet. Um, and So from that, we know some things about X. So what is that? What do those represent? Um, so the mean, mu equals 154.5, and the standard deviation, sigma, equals 29.3. And these are the mean and the standard deviation for the random variable x. So because we're in chapter seven, we're gonna be looking at two different random variables, both x and x bar. I'm gonna put a subscript on these mu sub x for the mean and sigma sub x for the standard deviation. Okay, then when we read the next part, it says, you intend to measure a random sample of n equals 204 trees. So I'm gonna write that down here as well. So what the central limit theorem tells us is that there's a new random variable for the sample means. And that new random variable is normal. It's mean, let's call mu sub x bar, and it's standard deviation sigma sub x bar. So what are, the question is what are, what is the mean so mu sub x bar and what is the standard deviation? Well, it turns out that the means are the same. So the mu sub x bar equals mu sub x, in this case, that's 154.5. The sigma x bar, so again, it's a little subscript. It's the standard deviation of the distribution of the sample means. So each sample of, of 204 trees has its own mean and standard deviation. And the mean of these guys is sigma x divided by the square root of n. So in this case, that's the 29.3 divided by the square root of 204. Okay, so how does that relate to that problem? Well, these two values would be what goes in these first two boxes. Mu sub x is 154.5, and this guy we would need to round it to see two decimal places so we would need to open up excel or jump into our calculator come on i'll just use excel real quick move it over equals 29.3 divided by the square root 204, and then we'll round that to two decimal places. 2.05. Um, when, you, when you do the problems later, subsequent problems, um, the rounding I would do at the very end of the problem. So here, I don't think it's gonna matter because we're not finding probabilities in this problem. We're just setting up the picture for this problem. So the standard deviation here is 2.05. So back over in this picture, so we have our mean, that's the 154.5. And we have our standard deviations, which is the 2.05. Then what are these three boxes here? Well, the middle one is the mean. So that's the 154. And then each tick mark, well, it says it's the standard error. That's our standard deviation. So each tick mark here measures one standard deviation away. So this is the sigma x bar, one of them, and then one more standard deviation away, another sigma x bar. So we're adding 2.05 twice to 154.5. So we could jump back into Excel, or use a calculator to take 150. 
4.5. And let's put an equal sign in front of it. I'm just going to add this cell to it twice. So I'm adding the cell that has the standard deviation in it twice in case there's a rounding error somewhere in here that causes it to round differently. But that upper one would be 158.60. Of course, you'd type this in, but I'm just writing it in because I have my stylus here. 158.60. And then let's just subtract two twice. So minus two minus two would be 152.5. And then minus 10 will be 152.4. So those are each two standard deviations away from the mean, those other two boxes. Um, and again, the main point of the central limit theorem is that when you look at the distribution of the sample means, so now each sample has a size, 204 trees, that distribution is going to be normal, regardless of the original, and it's going to have a mean that's the same as the original. So that part is really not a whole lot new there. The new part is in the standard deviation. You take the original standard deviation and you divide it by the square root of n. And then here's my cat trying to say hi, so I'll just bring him up. There he is, yep. Cat time. All right, um, so hopefully that you find that helpful. Um, and that's really for the first couple of homework problems. And then, um, the later homework problems, let's just look at one real quick. Stay there. Oh, let's see if I can erase all this. Erase everything. Um, in the later problems, they all kind of work the same way. They're more like the other videos. So we're given an initial distribution. with a mean and a standard deviation. And then they're asking us a question about that in the first part. And then in the second part, they're asking us a question about the distribution of the sample mean. So for example, in this problem, it says, um, the mean annual salary 10 years after graduation is $660,000. Wow, that's nice. Mu equals $160,000. That's great. What, who's graduating with that salary? Um, MBA programs, okay. Assume the population standard deviation is $38,000. Wow, again, that's a big standard deviation. 38,000, so the mean mu is 160,000. Standard deviation sigma is 38,000. Clearly, I'm in the wrong industry as I teach um, <laughs> online statistics. Um, and then our sample, a random sample has 95 graduates, so N equals 95. So we need that data, and this is the mu of our population, mu sub x and sigma sub x. The first problem is asking for the probability a single randomly selected salary. So that's the probability that x does not exceed 162,000 is less than 162,000. And that was work just like our normal distributions. Um, we could draw this picture. Here's my normal distribution. Here's my 160. Each tick mark would be 40,000 or 38,000. So 162 is right close to here. And I draw that in. It's the area to the left. Um, I might not have room on here to illustrate that in Excel, but it'd be, well, let's see. Maybe I can go down here, right? A. A, we would say norm distribution uh, would be 162,000. So I'm just going to put, well, uh, let's put it all in. And then that's the x value, 160,000 is our mean. Our standard deviation, 38,000. And our Cumulative value, I'm just gonna put a T for true. For part B, um, again, the sample size is 95. 
and they say, what's the prob? you know, you take a sample size 95, not an individual now, a sample of size 95, and what's the probability that the mean of that sample doesn't exceed 162? So that's the probability that X bar is less than 162,000. This is where we use the central limit theorem. I'm going to just come down here and tell you the Excel formula. Again, it's norm.distribution. Still 162,000 because it's the same value. We have the same mean, so that's still 160,000. And then what's changing is the standard deviation. And that's going to be our original standard deviation, 38,000, but it's going to be divided by the square root of n, the square root of 95. And again, cumulative value of true. Um, so I, you know, I would just type this into Excel. I don't want to estimate that value. So how you could do that is click into Excel. And let's see if I can move it so it's not in the way. Um, Okay, so I come into here and I'm going to say equal norm.distribution, 160,000, no, 162,000 to start. The mean is 160,000. The standard deviation is 38,000. And then I'll just do divided by, type in square root, or really I just type SQ and then I click on the square root function, square root of 95 and then the cumulative value of true. So, and then usually these would be rounded to four decimal places. So I'll just do my rounding in Excel. Um, maybe I won't because I can't fit it. There it is, number. So 0 0.6960 would be the answer for that one. And basically, I'm trying to move this. Basically, that is going to be considerably smaller than part A. Let me just do part A here so you can see the difference. You can see part A is going to be, um, sorry, did I, do that? did I say that wrong? It's bigger than part A. You can see this is almost 70%. And part A it looks like, it looks more like 50% or a little more than 50%. So let's check it, 162,000. The mean is 160,000. Standard deviation is 38,000, and the cumulative value is true. I'm anticipating this will be around 52, yep, 52 percent. So um, I'm just lucky. I don't know how I get that so close. Around it to four decimal places, 5210. So 0 0.5210. Maybe I should submit, just make sure I'm not making a mistake. Yep, they're both right. Um, so the key there on, on here is, is I know I've scrolled out of the way here a little bit. Uh, let's see, get this to the right spot. There we go. Um, the key is that in the initial problem, you're looking at the probability, the original random variable X is less than 162. So you use the values that you're given over here for our mean and our standard deviation. And then for the second part, because we're looking at a sample of size 95, we're looking at the probability the sample mean doesn't exceed 162,000. So that's the X bar here. And then we use our central limit theorem that says the mean is the same, 160,000. But the standard deviation, we have to take the original one and divide by the square root of n. OK, so hopefully that makes the homework a little bit easier. And, Again, just to re revisit that earlier homework question, let's look at another one like that. 
even question one here. Um, let's get my eraser going. Question one, you know, they're not, I don't have a picture related to this, but it just wants to know what is the mu sub x bar and the sigma x bar? So what we have to identify is what is the original mean? In this case, our original mean is 94.4. And what is the original standard deviation? In this case, our original standard deviation is 54.8. So the mu sub x, 94.4, and the sigma sub x, 54.8. And then when we take our sample size, the n sample size is 234. So again, the central limit theorem tells us mu sub x bar equals mu sub x, and sigma sub x bar equals sigma x divided by the square root of n. I, I won't do this problem, but I just wanted to show you how to set that up. Um, and again, you know, we have the first part already, and the second part we just take this 54.8 and divide it by the square root of 234. And later on, the problem is always to identify whether you're talking about a probability of an individual or the probability of the sample. And if it's the sample, you then have to know what size n. And then what changes is that the standard deviation gets divided by the square root of n for the new standard deviation. All right, hopefully that helps. Um, gonna close this guy down. If I can figure out how to do that. Let's see, close the mouse.